Hi, my name is Brian. Welcome to Inside the Mind of Randy Stair. In this comprehensive documentary, we will embark on a journey through the intricate layers of Randy Stair's life, unraveling the events and circumstances that ultimately led to a tragic act of violence. If this is your first time on Sekai, welcome. I hope you'll find enjoyment and consider becoming a part of the family by grayifying that subscribe button. Randy Stair was born on September 17, 1992, in Dallas, Pennsylvania. Raised in a loving household alongside his younger brother and sister, Randy's early years were characterized by a sense of innocence and curiosity. However, beneath the surface, signs of inner turmoil were already beginning to manifest. According to those closest to him, Randy was a sensitive and introspective child, often retreating into his own world to escape the challenges of adolescence. Despite his loving upbringing, Randy struggled to fit in with his peers, enduring taunts and teasing that left lasting scars on his psyche. As Randy entered adolescence, his struggles with social interaction became increasingly apparent. Bullied and ostracized by his peers, Randy sought refuge in the digital realm, where he began to cultivate his alter ego, Andrew Blaze. His earliest YouTube videos were what we call today, Let's Plays. In the virtual world of the internet, Randy found solace and validation, channeling his innermost thoughts and emotions into a series of animated videos and online diaries. Through his alter ego, Andrew Blaze, Randy could finally express himself freely, free from the constraints of his everyday life. For those who knew him best, Randy's immersion into the persona of Andrew Blaze was both a source of admiration and concern. While his online success brought him newfound confidence and recognition, it also fueled his growing detachment from reality. As Randy Stair's online presence grew, so too did his fixation on the animated television series Danny Phantom, a show in the early 2000s that follows the adventures of Danny Fenton, a teenage boy who gains ghostly powers after a lab accident. Those were inspired by Ember McLean, which is a ghost from a TV show called Danny Phantom, which started back in 2003, 2004. You know, I was in late elementary school at that time. But this ghost, this woman always connected with me. But ever since I first saw her, something changed. And it wasn't like I grew up or anything like that. Like I realized, oh my gosh, I'm attracted to girls and all this. No, it just, something changed. It was like a spark. And it just connected with me, it made me feel warm inside. And it felt very familiar, which was strange. It was like I'd seen her before. For Randy, Danny Phantom became more than just a TV show it became an obsession. He identified deeply with the protagonist's struggle to balance his dual identity and longed for a similar sense of purpose and power in his own life. Among the characters in Danny Phantom, one figure captured Randy Stair's imagination like no other, Ember McLean, the ghostly rock star. With her fiery blue hair and captivating music, Ember embodied rebellion and defiance qualities that resonated deeply with Randy, so much so that he created his own OCs and even a show on his YouTube channel called Ember's Ghost Squad. In Ember's Ghost Squad, Randy Stair crafted a world where ghosts and humans coexisted, led by Ember McLean as she navigated the challenges of the afterlife. The series combined elements of comedy, drama, and fantasy, offering a unique blend of entertainment and introspection. He often claimed he was going to put off his grand plan until the show was finished. However, that may not go as planned. As Randy's online persona flourished, his grip on reality began to loosen. High school, I was that typical jaded teenager, you know, just don't want to be here, don't want to do anything. I'm bored with my life. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Delusions and paranoia plagued his mind leading him down a dark and increasingly isolated path. The loss of his childhood friend left Randy Stair grappling with a profound sense of grief and despair. I'm Lynch. He was in my brother's grade. He's just, he's a grade below me, but I've had a class with him before and whatnot, so I knew him. And he died on his way to the school in the morning, crashed into a tree, smashed into a tree, dead on arrival at the hospital. And that was the first time I got messed up. That messed me up. Struggling to cope with the sudden absence of someone he had known for years, Randy found himself consumed by feelings of guilt and regret. 
On his YouTube channel and social media accounts, Randy occasionally alluded to his friend's death, expressing feelings of sadness, anger, and confusion. Later, his childhood friend would pass away in an accident. The loss served as a catalyst for his increasingly morbid fascination with death and mortality, themes that would come to define his later work. Doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna die. You'll end up dead one day. It's like right now. Someone right now is going to sleep. They're gonna wake up tomorrow and be dead. Someone's gonna die tomorrow that just went to sleep. And they don't know that. They're gonna go to sleep now, wake up tomorrow, go into the world, and they're gonna die somehow. Car accident, heart attack, some other supernatural force or whatever. Yeah, just, I think about that a lot too, which is weird. I think about death a lot. And I, I take no shame in thinking about dying a lot, but I seriously do think about death all the time and it's not a good thing death is not fun to think about in a way it's like an escape for me it is the death of his childhood friend marked a turning point in randy stair's life deepening his sense of alienation and pushing him further into the darkness from which he would never fully emerge he later got into a car crash himself it's almost like this incident changed everything in the final days before the tragedy Randy's behavior grew increasingly erratic and unpredictable. Cryptic messages and ominous warnings littered his online profiles, hinting at the devastation that was soon to come. Randy's online activity in the days preceding the shooting provides a chilling glimpse into his deteriorating mental state. From cryptic tweets expressing a sense of impending doom to disturbing videos uploaded to his YouTube channel, it becomes increasingly clear that Randy's descent into madness was reaching its climax. Me and Andrew are going to give the world a little insight as to what really lurks around in the shadows of your everyday lives. You won't want to miss this one. It's going to be historic. These were all sent right as he began the shooting, but these aren't the only concerning ones. These account are all still up, somehow. One last thing to note was the strange things he admitted to staying up late at night and doing. He truly lived within his obsessions. What it came down to was I felt like I was like transgender or something. Like I felt like a, a woman the whole time, which spiritually I'm a woman, I'm a female soul. But I had to live in a man's body to do what I set out to do. When you guys would go to your bowling leagues and Jeremy would go with you, I would either film a YouTube video, you know, back in early high school, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th grade. I would pretty much always film a YouTube video between 9th and 10th grade on every Wednesday when you would go out the door. So I would either film a video or I would cross-dress. And that's something I've kept to myself my whole life. I never told anybody about this. Since 2013, I just felt more and more feminine. Can't even explain it. Look at, look at the bathroom. Look at where my stuff was. You'll see there's a girl's Venus razor there. There's the skin to knit stuff that girls use to shave their legs and arms with. Every three days since like 2016, I've been shaving my arms and legs and entire body every three days. It's just one thing I'll say is like that white stain on the floor, like that splotch you'll see on my carpet. That was an ember thing. I just, I wanted to make my skin as white as possible to look like her. I wanted it to be completely white. So I bought this, this body paint which was like, I don't even know what it was. It was like latex that like, it becomes like glued to your skin and you gotta peel it off. And it got on the carpet and then it got freaking in my body hair, which like almost never came out at the time. What little body hair I had at the time anyways, but um, that stuff never came off. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, you're over there sleeping and here I am at three in the morning covering myself in this latex. Towards the very end, he put out a video to decide where he would strike out his tragedy. Randy decided he was going to take out this horrendous plot based off nothing but a coin flip. So here's the deal. Got a 1983 quarter right here. You believe in fate? Here's the fate test. I'm gonna flip this three times, or the best out of three rather. And if it's heads, I'll do it here. If it's tails, supermarket. Best of three. Here we go. Not gonna touch it. We'll see it as I see it. Find it. There it is. That's the tails. See that? Two. 
looking at it. Land use of heads. <laughs> Had to be, huh? Have to have it come down to the very last coin flip. Okay, this is it for all the marbles. Except we're playing for <laughs> like much more than marbles here. I can't believe I'm having this come down to a coin flip. The flip of a coin. Here it goes. One, two, three. I'll land behind the camera. Just to the side. I can't see it. I see it in the grass, but I can't see it. Tails. That is a tails, folks. Tails. Which means there's gonna be a loss of a human life besides my own. Possibly more than one. That's fate for you. With that, the plan was set in motion. He was obsessed with the Columbine shooting and left this tape behind explaining warning signs he wished his parents would have noticed, alluding to how much he wished to be seen. Eric Harris had a white t-shirt, black text, natural selection. I bought three of them, yet none of you knew what it meant, which blew my mind. I didn't want to tell you that, so I kept that under wraps. That's a warning sign. Looking back now, you might realize, geez, I, I don't know how I missed it. You might just start having flashbacks in your head of certain things, like certain situations where it's like, wow, that was one of them, or that was a warning sign right there. Randy went into work that night with two pistol grip shotguns near the closing time of the store. Prior to the attack, instead of doing his usual work, he recorded himself preparing for the assault. He barricaded the store's exits with pallets and other obstacles, meticulously setting the stage for the unfolding tragedy. He drew out a map planning exactly how he would carry it out. He then sent these tweets. The internet knew what was going on, but it was far too late. As the store's closing time approached, Stair initiated his meticulously planned attack. He was working with his four co-workers, Victoria, Brian, Terry, and Kristen. Kristen and Victoria were in the same aisles working with their headphones on, listening to music. Kristen heard a small bang and a thud. She turned to see what was going on before realizing what happened. Him and Kristen lock eyes for a moment. He then decides to walk away and spare her for unknown reasons. He then murdered Brian and Terry, who was trying to run already. This was when Kristen realized she needed to run to get help. She ran for the front and forced her way out calling 911 and hiding behind a bush until help arrives. Randy shot at the propane tanks, hoping they would explode, but they wouldn't. He then walked to the deli and turned the gun towards himself about 1 a.m. the morning of June 8th, 2017. One of the most haunting things was this tweet. Someone mentioning the strange behavior to the FBI just one morning after the incident. In the aftermath of the tragedy, the community of Dallas was left grappling with grief, anger, and disbelief. While some sought answers, others struggled to come to terms with the senseless loss of life. As we reflect on the life of Randy Stair, one thing becomes abundantly clear. His story serves as a sobering reminder of the fragility of the human mind and the devastating consequences of unchecked mental illness. If you or someone you know is struggling with a lot of emotions, never hesitate to reach out for help to these numbers. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd want me to look into next. Thank you so much for watching.